there's so many people that I'm excited about today. It's hard to know where to start, but I guess I really should start with the first guest, right? So um, I am going to be bringing on Matt Duffy, or or as he is known, Sourdough Duffy, on the World Wide Web. Um, I met Matt uh, in Toronto a couple of years ago. I was consulting at an awesome pizzeria uh, in Toronto called Descendant. Shout out to Chris at Descendant DSP. Um, and Matt was like, hey, you're in town. He hit me up on, on Instagram and we became fast friends. So we spent uh, a couple of fun nights together. He gave me a tour. He invited me to his house. He gave me the, uh, the, the, you know, the king's treatment, I guess. And so um, I have a lot of beautiful pizza friends that I have never met uh, on Instagram and uh, on Facebook and on Twitter and on YouTube. But this guy I actually got to meet. And so we talked about bringing him out to do the Pizza Expo this year when we met. And since it didn't happen, I, I called him and I said, hey, Matt, we're not going to be going to Vegas this year, but would you consider Zooming with us? He's like, absolutely. What's the date? I'm like, I'm not sure. I'll get back to you. And then the rest, as they say, is history, right? Well, you you know what we say. Maddie, if you're there, why don't you go ahead and turn your video on? And like what we like to say, if it doesn't happen on Zoom, does it even happen these days? So uh, Matt's going to jump on in just a momo, and I'm going to be jumping off. And then I will see you guys in about, I don't know, say 15 minutes. Matt Duffy, if you are there, come on down. All right. See you guys in a bit. Sourdough Duffy, is that you? Hey, how you doing? What Where are you today, sir? Where are you? Uh, I am in my house in Toronto. Uh, it is my daughter's third birthday, so there is kind of stuff all over. Uh, and it is raining and gloomy in Ontario right now. Sounds lovely. Wish I were there. <laughs> yeah, not, not the best time to be in Ontario, but let's not talk about the negative stuff that's going on. Let's be on a positive. Uh, I mean, we are here to talk about some some sourdough pizza. Um, thank you so much for the glowing introduction. The 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 ability to connect on social media, I think, is really amazing, and just the ability to um, get feedback from a professional, to talk to a professional, to talk to another professional, to talk to anyone in any way. I think in in so many ways, it's just so good for industry and for growing and for continuing on craft and building. So I think that's really cool that we were actually able to meet that way. Um, I have a little bit of a couple things to show you. So for anyone that doesn't know, we're going to be talking about uh, sourdough today. So this is a natural culture. Basically, it is fermented flour and water. Um, there is a live culture in here bubbling around. I need to feed it every day. I'll remove a small portion of that into a new container. I typically keep it in a plastic container um, because glass breaks. Uh, and this is actually ready to mix a dough with. It's probably like a little bit under ready actually, but we could actually make our dough. Um, I know we sort of discussed uh, sourdough pizza and what it is. I think that really something to keep in mind for anyone that's out there, for everyone listening is a lot of people bake sourdough bread. There's a lot of people that make pizza. There's a lot of people that make sourdough pizza. But for me, I think they're different things. I think bread and pizza are two different things. And I think if you understand the fundamental skills it takes to make great pizza dough, you can make a great sourdough dough. I think that often um, the message gets confused because I think really what we see the most is you see bakeries that are making pizza. And so the bakery might have a big slab pizza, you know, you come in, they've got the big tray of it, some different toppings, you can grab it. And those are great. But in my opinion, and I think you probably agree with me, that is a bread pizza. It's a bread dough with toppings on top. It makes a pizza. It's almost like, I think it was one of your workshops where you said, this dough is actually a baguette dough. We're using it for pizza. You could turn it into a baguette. But to turn it into a baguette, it requires different handling, different fermentation. <clears throat> it's only that formula that's the same. And I think that's the biggest thing for people first to understand. The process takes a lot longer. And it's a little bit different. So if you know how to make sourdough bread and you know how to make pizza, you can pretty much combine them using the fundamentals of making pizza dough. Um, really, if we're talking on a commercial scale, I think it's a little bit more challenging to manage, but like any business as you're first opening, as you're going through anything or any transitions, it's not easy from the beginning. So if you're, you know, when anyone that owns a pizza place in here, when you start making pizzas for your restaurant, 
it's probably challenging to get the systems down to figure out what time to make the dough, how long does it go in the fridge for, do I leave it out, when do I shape it? But once you get those things down, it becomes very easy and second nature. And then you sort of get in the routine of mastering your dough. And I think we can apply those same principles to sourdough. You just now have this one variable of, we have a ripe active living culture that's required to make our dough with. So we have to use a bit more timing. It ultimately takes a little bit more skill from the, from the pizza maker, I think. And if we really want to get traditional, most of the pizza was sourdough way back when, and most of the bread was sourdough. So we didn't start with yeast. We started with natural fermentation and then modernized. We try to make it faster. It's much easier for the baker to mix a dough at, you know, 6 a.m. and have bread on the shelves at 8 a.m. kind of thing, one to two hours later. When we talk about the actual fermentation, our mixing changes a little bit. I'm sure anyone that's done, you know, you're mixing in your mixer one day can be a little different. We're going to make some slight changes with sourdough as well. Uh, but that's kind of an overview on it, I guess. Is that a start anyways? That's a, that's a beautiful start. I mean, one of the things I'll add is that one of the uh, probably one of the most positive things to come out of this last year is that I feel like a lot of people, professionals, home bakers, everybody in between has been kind of going back to basics and, and in, in a way kind of looking at their bucket list. And for some reason, Matt, and maybe you know better than me, sourdough ended up at the top of the bucket list for a lot of bread and pizza makers. Why is that? So great question. Uh, really true going back in that going back to basics and understanding a fundamental i think the biggest thing about sourdough and why people obsessed over it over home i was just talking to someone about this yesterday is the fact that you can actually do it that the hands-on time to make uh so for me the best pizza dough is long fermented yes you can make a pizza dough on the same day in four hours even two you know but that 48 hour dough is always better better flavor it's better to stretch it has better shelf life um and by doing that sort of going back to basics, we can extend and create so much more out of our product. But for the reason why people are doing it at home is it takes a very long time, but it's not a lot of hands on time. So you mix the dough and wait, you mix it some more and wait, you fold it and wait, you shape it and wait. And so by working from home, you can build a sourdough schedule quite easily. Whereas when you're doing a job, it's a lot harder to have your Levin fed twice a day or once a day or the night before, have it ready to mix, know exactly when it's going to go in the fridge, rush off to work, come home, pull your dough. When you're home, it only takes a few minutes. You can have a dough on the counter. I mean, you can see beside me here. I, I'm, I kind of cheat because I actually teach baking for a living. So, but I do always have a dough. There's a mixer here. There's a bread on top of it. It's always going on. Another one that I felt is something that Maybe this is the next trend if lockdowns continue. <clears throat> barbecue, because barbecue is similar. The hands-on time isn't massive unless you're doing the butchery yourself. There's a small hands-on time, but then there's a long wait time. And if you're home, you can throw the smoker on, you can throw a brisket in there. You can mix your pizza dough and have it rise for four hours. For me, when I'm doing pizza doughs, I would say um, I would go anywhere between 24 and 72 hours. And that doesn't include the mixing bulk ferment, that's only the fridge time after. So you're talking about a long time commitment, but not a lot of hands-on. I think that's really why it picked up because people realize that this is something I could actually finally do. And now I've got the time to do it. I think that's really it. That's awesome. You know what? Another thing I like about sourdough is that a lot of people ask me, I need a quick dough. I need a quick dough. What can you do for me in like four to six hours? And one of the awesome things about sourdough is if you know how to use it, you can make a fully flavored, fully fermented dough in four to six hours. Try that with yeast and see what you get. Yeah. And if we're talking about, so for, for our uh, viewers, when we talk about this, so most bakers, most books will tell you a Levin percentage or a yeast percentage. But when we're talking about bakers, the language is more so used um, in pre-fermented flour. So we're taking a formula that has X amount of flour, and then we're going to talk about how much flour is pre-fermented. So if anyone's done a biga, a poolish, that's pre-fermented flour. And with this, you're right. I can get pre-fermented flour in it in no time. All I need is the ripe starter. Um, even smaller things, you know, we can combine a bit of yeast and a bit of starter as well to give another flavor profile and it's really quite versatile and then finally depending on how you want to keep your starter you can change the flavor profiles altogether if you want to go more acetic so acetic acid being sort of like vinegar um, lactic acid being more like yogurt so right now this starter 
if I smell it, it has a yogurt or a lactic smell to it. It's a young Levan. It's not quite ripe yet. It doesn't have overly powerful sour notes. You don't really want to taste, especially in pizza, a really sour crust. You want to manage the starter and keep that sweet note to it so that when we finally actually make the dough, so you can really balance and create your own unique thing. I think, I think Noelle, we were talking a few days ago about flour blend blending and pizzerias flour blending so that they can have their own unique formula or any home baker or any professional, you can have a separate recipe through blending and you can do the exact same thing with sourdough, depending on how you manage your starter, because my sourdough culture is going to be different from yours. You're in LA, I'm in Toronto. We're going to create two different pizzas and we can follow the same formulas, the same methods, and you can really kind of customize what you're doing that way. Beautiful, right? I'm, I'm just curious. So you teach at a at a school, and you're teaching professionals who are going into the into the restaurant business. Are are they interested in in sourdough as well? So another great question. So when I first started at the college full time, it was about three years ago. Um, I was working uh, before that as a chef and doing private chef work for a billionaire. I started teaching part time, and when I first started at the school, um, my background's in Michelin restaurants. I had the idea of everyone in here is going to be training to be Michelin chefs. But the reality of a college system is not everyone wants to do that. Some people just want a job. Some people want a food truck. And so we sort of look at the curriculum and just through having someone who's doing sourdough breads and passionate about bread, slowly the, I don't know what to call it, the buzz or the hype started growing in the students. So in my first year, if you surveyed a hundred students, probably 98 of them would have said, I want to decorate cakes and make cupcakes. There's one of them in the chat right there. I just saw pop up Genwa. Yes, we love to make sourdough. So when I first started, everyone wanted to make cakes. And when I got towards the end, or if you were to ask 100 students today, probably 50% of them would say they want to make bread and 50% of them would want to, would say that they want to make cakes. And I think a lot of that's contagious. You know, Our faculty's passionate about what we do. I'm always talking about sourdough. I'm always baking bread. I'm always sharing the knowledge of it. And I think it just kind of gets contagious and people pick it up. So our students are not only baking sourdough in the labs when we were in labs, but now a lot of them have little sourdough cultures at home. And we were able to pick up a flower sponsor this semester. So Anita's Organic in BC, they shipped a bunch of flour to us that I was able to distribute to a bunch of our students. And almost all of the students use the flour for sourdough projects. So we've got the, the really cool thing is they've taken these, so they've taken my concept of sourdough, what I know, what I know about bread, what I know about pizza, but a lot of them have applied it to their own baking. We've seen pitas. One that I just saw a couple days ago from one of my students, sourdough barberry bread. It was really, really amazing. Uh, they've been making sourdough brioche and they've just taken that idea, the knowledge of how to use a ripe starter, how the percentages work, how the fermentation schedules work and really applied it to their own baking. It's quite amazing to see that. It is right. You know, yeah. also one of the things that I deal with a lot is I have a lot of uh, everybody from home bakers to chefs asking me these sourdough questions. And one of the things I try to do with people, I don't know how you approach it, is I try to get people to make great pizza, great bread without sourdough, take it to its limit. And then when you're advanced enough, when you're solid enough in your, in your recipe and your technique, then we move to sourdough. What, what's your approach? Okay, so that's also a great approach. That's what I used to always do. I used to always start people on yeast and recommend, hey, for a more basic recipe, start with yeast. Now it more depends on the person. So for example, in the curriculum at the college, we start with yeasted doughs for about, I think until week seven in a 14 week program and week eight, we start to get into natural 11. So they build foundational skills of handling, shaping, fermentation. However, you know, if I was to, let's say I was talking to you and you just called me up and said, I really want to learn sourdough. You know, I'm not interested in eating another bread for health reasons, for personal reasons, whatever. I'm not going to tell you to start on a yeasted dough first, but definitely to build the foundational skills is helpful. So I think it depends on the person. Yeah. Uh, most of the time I would recommend what you're the way you do it, but then you get the odd person that just really doesn't care about doing it. And, you know, like if I told you all I want to learn how to make is a calzone, there's no sense teaching me how to make a pizza because I don't care. And that's the same kind of thing I'm seeing. And I think a lot of that's now amplified because of social media, because of pandemic sourdough, because of lockdown sourdough. Now people are more and more people tell me that they don't eat yeast to doughs or don't make yeast to doughs, but they don't even know why they don't know why. Or a lot of people talk about the 
your gut flora and how sourdough is a beneficial microbe and, and it can help. But I don't really, so I don't want to give the wrong information. It's definitely healthier, but I don't know the exacts behind it. So when people ask me that, I'm kind of like, yeah, I, I guess so. But I think a lot of it's hype. It's almost, it's almost the reverse of the celiac. Uh, you know, there was a time I'm sure you experienced it in LA where everyone couldn't eat gluten. Nobody could have gluten at all. Now it's like people are saying, oh, well, I can't eat yeast. I can only eat sourdough. I only make sourdough. And they kind of turn their nose up at non-sourdough bakers. But I, I think it's all, it all benefits learning. You're going to get better from all of it. So I don't know. Do, do it all. I mean, you, you, you raise a lot of very interesting points. One of the things I'm noticing, too, in the way things are, are moving along is that, yeah, there's definitely been an interest in, in gluten-free, but I, I also think that there's, on a professional level, there's a real interest from chefs in uh, lower protein, right, lower gluten uh, types of pizza, because I think that uh, they kind of go hand in hand. Too much gluten and not enough fermentation leaves you with a feeling in your, in your belly that maybe you didn't make the right food choice, but take that same product, ferment it properly with yeast or with sourdough, right? Also re reduce the protein, right? To as much as you need, but as little as possible. So you don't end up with a really chewy pizza. I, I find that that's what chefs are going for lately. And there's this, there's this term that I never heard before I became a consultant called mouthfeel. And chefs are looking for that unbelievable blend of like, chewy, crispy, soft, airy, light, but also like they don't want to chew on a bagel, right? When they eat pizza, none of that, like 14 and a half percent gluten anymore, right? Or protein. They want something that's light and airy and digestible. And I feel like there's a beautiful combination of learning how to choose the right flour, right? And also uh, decide for yourself, do you want sourdough? Do you want poolish? Do you want fresh yeast, instant dry, active dry, whatever works for you and find that, that beautiful combination that really nails the product you're looking for, right? And I think by the way that you manage your sourdough starter, you can help with that mouthfeel. You can also, so one of the things when we're using pre-fermented flour, whether for me anyways, whether it's pizza or bread, by using pre-fermented flour, we can often cut down on the final mixing time and, and, one thing I've seen in Toronto and a few places is with the mixing process, it's often under, misunderstood and people tend to overmix. So you see a box that fits a 14 inch pizza and now there's a 12 and a half inch pizza. Yeah. Most of the time it's probably because they're overmixing the dough and they're developing too much elasticity because they have too strong of a flour or they haven't fermented it properly or they haven't let it come through room temp properly. And with our sourdough culture, you can hit just that. You can still get that mouthfeel. You can still get that pre-fermented flour that's going to break down the gluten a little bit, but still keep enough to stretch it. You can combine your flours a little better. I, I definitely see that happening here. And I know the horrors of a... Um, of, I guess I can call it a bread pizza where you're just chewing and chewing and chewing and chewing. I mean, my crust is the favorite part. There's a few places you go, you eat it and you can't even eat that because you don't have the mouthfeel and you kind of skip over it, but at least you can break it down. You can make that with your, with your culture. Absolutely. So what well, I know we, we don't, I wish we had more time. Justin's going to be coming on soon and ringing that, that two minute blue bell. There he is. But I want to give you an opportunity, Matt. Um, I know, I know we're going to try to teach a class together, what I call a zoom pizza collab, but you already have a variety of classes that you're offering. Can you, Justin, if you can drop some of those links into the chat and Matt, if you wouldn't mind telling us like what's out there for people, whether they're professionals or home bakers. Sure. So um, I just launched yesterday, actually uh, my first digital school, so I'm going to host a multitude of classes. The first one that's up there now that just started yesterday is a sourdough course. It's meant for, it's meant for people who are newer to sourdough. So maybe the professional that's been baking for 20 years, while they might learn a few things, <clears throat> might be a bit basic for them. But if you are new to sourdough, if you've been making sourdough, but you're not quite sure, or you've been following 10 different recipes on the internet, you don't know which one's which, <clears throat> I'm trying to break it down step by step. The second course, which I just put the sign up on my website, the first 50 subscribers will get a special offer, which is what I did with the first one, is a simplifying pizza course. And I haven't decided if it's going to be just sourdough. Most likely it will only be sourdough pizza. It might be more than that. And then the third one is going to drop in the fall. I haven't announced this yet, but it is going to have to do with a very special Italian bread that typically has fruit in it. And I think people are going to go nuts. And I've been working on that for several years now, trying to figure it out. Um, so on my website, you can find under online learning, there is the current digital course, 
the upcoming stuff. And you can also find once this course and my daughter's birthday is over, I'll do some of my own sort of pizza uh, and bread baking webinars. And you can find that on my website as well. For today, for anyone that's watching, I threw a promo code SLOWRISE420. Uh, for anyone that wants to sign up for my course, it's 42% off of the regular price. So you can find the link, hit it. 420 is my favorite day. Um, I'm already lit. It's my daughter's birthday. It's perfect. I wanted to offer 42% for everyone here because this is such a great crowd. Uh, and that's it for now. I've got a few other things coming up, but I'm going to keep those a little bit secret for now. We definitely have talked a while about doing sort of a Zoom collab pizza. So either watch out. I'll announce that. But also, if you're not subscribed to Sol Slow Rise newsletter, make sure you're on that as well so you catch that event. Awesome, Matt. Thank you so much. Just everybody, I put Maddie's uh, Instagrams in there, also his website, and also the specific link to his online classes. So, Matt, thank you very much for that. Nicole, hello, hello. Yes, we have some questions in the chat that we will try to answer. Some of them were very technical baking questions, so we'll try to get with Matt and see if maybe he could answer a few of those questions for you all. Awesome. Thank you. Fire them off right now, or you mean after? We're going to have to go on, unfortunately. Remember, we're on a tight schedule, Maddie. So if you want to stay around, uh, just turn off your video and you and Nicole can get those fingers going. Uh, I'll start, I'm going to disappear and I'll start answering them in the chat. Thank you so much, Perfect. bud. Good stuff.